Hello everybody, welcome Malcolm Teasdale here. Well, it's right before Christmas, so I thought I would give you an episode about a place which is totally inappropriate. How about that? Food for thought, you may say. Anyway, I'm going to talk about a place called Pattaya in Thailand. I stumbled on it accidentally. Now, a lot of people who have been to Pattaya will probably be thinking right now, well, that's a lot of BS. Not a chance he did it accidentally. Well, let me tell you the facts about this. I'm a scuba diver, avid scuba diver, so my aim about going to Pattaya was to do some diving. There's some decent dive sites there. It's just south of Bangkok. In fact, it's located about 20 minutes, no, actually 90 minutes drive south of Bangkok's International Airport. It's on the eastern Gulf Coast, known for its wild nightlife scene that attracts international visitors, weekenders from Bangkok, and lots of expats. Now, I didn't know about this well, in its entirety, I knew a little bit about it, but, it, you know, not enough to put me off, so to speak, because I was compelled, if you wish, to go on a scuba diving trip. It was a quiet fishing village as recently as the 1960s. It is now lined with resort hotels, high-rise condos, and a large seaside mall. Jet skiing, parasailing, and other water sports are popular activities in Pattaya's busy beaches. Now, during the Vietnam War, American servicemen frequented the place, and since then, that small fishing village has grown into a popular tourist area. Now, I didn't have much time to spare, as I was in transit through Thailand about a few days, uh, but I decided to go scuba diving. So instead of spending two days in Bangkok, I took a taxi from the international airport to the town of Pattaya in an effort to scuba dive for a couple of days, knowing that I had enough land time before and after the dives to be safe from decompression sickness. I had already paid in advance for my hotel to get the best rate possible, but what was unforeseen was a sinus problem that had inflicted me a day earlier and got worse during my inbound flight to Bangkok. It wasn't serious at that point, but Unless it cured itself within the next 24 hours, then diving was probably going to be off limits. Now, my hotel in Pattaya was called the Siam Bayshore, a very reasonably priced hotel with good reviews on TripAdvisor. The taxi fare to get there from Bangkok Airport was about $50. It's very reasonable, which, in fact, is incredibly cheap for a lengthy drive like that. Good job it wasn't London, Sydney, or Amsterdam, which is probably, in my opinion, the most expensive places to get a taxi. Close by my hotel was a laundry shop, so I took a bag of load of dirty laundry I'd accumulated and dropped them off. These Thai laundry businesses are great because they do a super job for very little money. Now, the lady who managed the place told me that they would be ready for pickup at noon the next day. The cost calculated was by weight, not based on what's actually in the bag. It was 7pm, and I knew from past experiences with these shops, it would be ready exactly when she said it would be. Now, even though I wasn't feeling 100% healthy, I pushed myself to go out that evening, and I was in a place I likely would not visit again, so I forced myself to see the sights and sounds of the city. It was hot, and it was humid. So wearing anything more than shorts and a t-shirt seemed impractical, especially since I would be walking around. So after walking out of the rear door of the hotel, I turned right and underneath an archway, Walking Street appeared. It's a street where cars are allowed to pass during daylight hours, but are blocked from dusk to dawn. As far as I could see, the street was lit up like a Christmas tree. Now my initial thought, was that it reminded me of Bourbon Street in New Orleans on a wild night. But it was far crazier than that. It started off pretty tame as I walked south on Walking Street, passing Rasputin Restaurant, a jewellery shop, a couple of small hotels, an art gallery, and a scuba diving centre. 
Now, that wasn't my diving centre, but as I said, there's a number of diving centres there because the diving is quite popular. Now, after that, things started to get rather risque. Along Walking Street, there was the Freelancer Bar, Saloon Plaza, which consists of many tiny bars crammed into a small space. Someone will call it My Way Beer Bar, Linda Beer Bar, Blackout A Go Go, Lucky Star Bar Complex, Dollhouse A Go Go, Peppermint A Go Go, Jenny's Star Bar, Pin Beer Bar, Sexy A Go Go, Stoney's Beer Bar, and an unending list of others. There were other businesses in the street that seemed totally out of place, but they were located there. It seemed to give Walking Street an iota of normality and respectability. There were tailors, ice cream shops, travel companies, gift shops, pharmacies, and one that got my attention was called Rehab Ministries. Rehab for what? I don't know, but based on what I saw in the first half hours there, it could be alcoholism, or it could be prostitution, or from a religious context, it could be from flirting with the devil. Walking Street is a mile of sin. Even the many side streets containing an overwhelming amount of naughty places were prevalent. Cabarets seem like a tame name to most people of something that represents a show. In Pattaya, these are either provocative dance shows with girls or lady boys, or to the more extreme, live sex shows including tricks with toys and ping pong balls. Pretty outrageous stuff, but this is normal operating procedure in this beach town. The weird thing about it all is that prostitution is illegal in Thailand. I suppose that these types of shows do not represent the world's oldest profession, but as with most of the girls that work in beer bars and agogo clubs, they can be bought either for a short time or overnight. Now, Amsterdam is well known, as most people do, for its red light district, but it is confined to a small area on the outskirts of the city. It's a tourist trap, and although I admit going there is just to see what it was all about, I noticed tour buses pull up and drop off curious foreigners as if it was one of the main attractions of the city. For some people visiting Amsterdam, it actually is. Now, in Pattaya, if you don't like what you see, then all you got to do is go back to your hotel room or leave town. For those inclined, there are a number of gay bars which are concentrated on Soy Pattaya Lam 3. That's a street name. There is some organisation to the madness of all this. There is a large contingent of Russians and people from Eastern Europe that mingle with Westerners and Asians in a sort of a friendly manner. Now, to accommodate everyone, there are restaurants to suit visitors from all over the world. However, people don't visit Pattaya for the restaurants. I had been walking for quite a while, and the heat and humidity was making me thirsty. I was in this sinful place, so I thought I might as well stop somewhere for a beer. Now, on Walking Street, there was a larger-than-typical bar on the corner of Soy Diamond, or Diamond Street, that was blasting out live music. I sat at a high table and ordered a beer. It was no surprise that it was cheap, based on the competition from hundreds of other similar establishments in the area. I was probably sitting at the tamest bar in town, but the live music was pretty good, apart from some drunk Russian guy who took it on himself to dance solo right in front of the band. Now, after sitting there for a few minutes, the atmosphere started to have a positive effect on me. What I initially thought was a pretty disgusting place was now sort of fun. Admittedly, it, to me at least, is not a livable town, or somewhere I would frequent once a week, but really a place where one visit, maybe two, is probably enough in a lifetime. About two years ago, I met a British businessman in Singapore at a hotel bar. I remember him saying that he lived in Pattaya and loved it, because he was out of the rat race of the workforce of England. I cannot imagine living anywhere near Walking Street, so he maybe lived in the outskirts of the city in some private community. I paid for my beer and handed over a 30 baht tip to my smiling waitress, which is about a dollar. 
then, as I walked down the road, this thought entered my head. Shall I do it or not? That was the thought bugging me as I walked up Soy Diamond and stopped outside a bar called Spanker's. It could have been any bar, but something inside my head said, You only live once, just do it. Well, without further hesitation, because if there was, I would have backed out. I took the plunge and was inside, being escorted to a seat, a row back from one of the dance floors. The place was full of dancers, waitresses and men. A couple of the men had female companions who were dressed like the dancing girls, who just sat with them or sat on their lap. So I assume these foreigners got their attention when they were strutting their stuff on stage to come on over after their session on the floor. Now, a couple of men were with non-locals, obviously curious couples. Or the male had dragged his partner in there, kicking and screaming. I don't know. I could never take a girl or my wife into such a place. I could barely take myself in there. Nevertheless, here I was in Spanker's place of ill repute, probably a lot like many other bars in the area. There were girls either pole dancing, taking a soapy bath, sitting on men's laps or chatting up the customers while waiting for their turn to dance provocatively. Waitresses, who were not any of the above, likely because they are slightly less good looking than the others, in my humble opinion, kept the drinks flowing to customers. The idea being, of course, that the more they drink, the more freely they would part with their money. What I meant by that is either tip the dancers or bar fine them by taking them out of the club on a short time date or somewhere for an overnight stay. This is the basis of how these clubs make money, as well as the drinks, of course. The girls get paid very little for dancing, and the ones who make themselves available to customers can earn quite a lot more, although a percentage of the bar fine is kept by the establishment itself. Now, a bar fine can be as little as 1,000 baht, uh, but whatever a girl negotiates in addition with the customer is hers to keep. There is always a mamasan in charge who acts as the interface between the customer and the girls and is typically a very good saleswoman with the ability to close the deal if a customer is undecided. I know that because I was given a professional sales pitch, which was serious, funny and also sincere. In many places, all the girls at dance must be able to be bar fined, meaning they do not have a choice. Now, the girls see it as a way to earn some money rather than zero bar. Some of what they earn will be sent to the family for support, the family which probably lives in northern Thailand or somewhere out of the cities of Pattaya or Bangkok. Now, depending on their age, others may have a small child that is cared for by the dancer's mother, so any earnings will go to support them both. It's a sad situation in many ways, but it is what it is. People have to survive any way they can, and it just so happens that, with cities like Patia on the map, there are plenty of job opportunities and a lot of paying customers. Many people will question the moral aspects of such a place, and some will question my ethics in participating, even though I just entered, drank a beer, and stayed for a while. In reality, there are a lot more evil things in the world today, where people get killed or hurt. Strip clubs exist in the USA and practically all over the world. But there is no rule of thumb that sets the limit of what is and what is not permissible from a moral standpoint. If Pattaya is offensive to anyone, then they shouldn't go there. I went to the killing fields in Cambodia, a graveyard of unsurpassed horror based on one of the most shameful and appalling events in recent history. I went there to be educated, not because I endorsed anything that occurred at that time. Now, at Spankers, it was a party-like atmosphere, a business that is well-managed with good employees and good customer service. I did not buy a t-shirt for a souvenir. That may have been pushing my luck, wearing something like that down at the grocery store back home. However, my sinus infection was getting worse, which unfortunately ruled me out of the diving the next day. In fact, I was getting to the point where I could not stay out anymore and definitely not drink any more beer. So I left the bright lights, the wildness of it all, and returned to my hotel to try and sleep off the infection. 
The next day, my laundry was ready on time, nicely folded and bagged, all for about $8, as I expected. Unfortunately, my sinus infection was bad enough to the extent where I had to go to Pattaya Memorial Hospital. I walked in and was greeted by a staff member who escorted me to a check-in desk. After a short wait, I met with a doctor, had an x-ray, and prescribed some medicine which I obtained from the hospital's pharmacy, all within the space of an hour. The service was excellent, and for about $100, I couldn't complain. That afternoon, I went to a spa called Let's Relax. It's a chain of women in Thailand. The company has various locations all over the country, from Chiang Mai in the north, Bangkok, of course, Phuket, and even in places like Pattaya. Good reputation as well. I spent two hours being pampered by way of a body scrub and a full body massage. That was the best medicine I could have wished for, and I convinced it helped my sinus infection improve. Being miserable did not deter me from a visit to the Pig and Whistle British pub that evening. It was Sunday, and I wanted a good old British roast dinner with all the trimmings, you know, Yorkshire pudding, roast potatoes, etc., etc. I was not disappointed by the quality of the food or the price. At $6.50, it was a real bargain. From where I was sitting, I had a good view of a large screen TV showing English football. The pub also had limited accommodation, but the immediate vicinity was just too noisy for my liking, and it wouldn't have been ideal for a good night's sleep. The Siam Bayshore, where I was staying, was out of harm's way, in a quiet spot away from the action. Down Soy 7 where the pub was located, were entertainment plazas which contained several small bars similar to some of the ones on Walking Street. All had their theme, whether it was Australian, Russian or British influence. Some had pool tables, while others had gimmicks to try and attract customers. I can't imagine how many bars are in Pattaya crammed into the three square miles close to the beach. Several hundred likely, most of which I believe are owned by expats from around the world. If you look in the local newspaper under businesses for sale, guess what you'll find? I don't think anyone earns a lot of money from these bars, but owning one for a few months or a year or two may be an enjoyable experience. I don't know. I bet that a bar changes hands once a week in the city. I walked along the beach road on the way back to the hotel. Every 10 yards or so, there was a freelance prostitute soliciting passers-by. They weren't pushy, but rather making comments like, where you go, and I go with you. <laughs> the only thing to do is smile and keep on walking. I had to walk the gauntlet of Walking Street on the way back to my hotel. It was full swing, with music blasting out of all the bars, collectively creating a distorted noise, but it took nothing away from the electric atmosphere. I did not drink any more that night, and they decided to take my medicine and try and get a good night's sleep, which would help my sinus issue. My flight from Bangkok was in the afternoon, so I had time to do some souvenir shopping before taking the taxi to the airport. I was starting to improve, which was a good thing, as flying with a sinus infection is not recommended due to the pressurised cabin. Anyway, I reached the airport with time to spare, so enjoyed the peace and quiet of the Thai Airways Lounge, an environment so different from where I just came from. I suppose I could have stayed in Pattaya for a couple more days doing the same thing as before, but I likely would have become bored. Two days is enough, in my opinion, in what I think is the wildest city on the planet. Sorry, Bangkok, you are in second place now. So, if you're that way inclined, Pattaya is a place you should go to. And there's a saying that was made by a magazine, I can't remember the name of it. It says, Las Vegas is for pussies, Pattaya is for real men. Just think about that. Anyway, it's a wild place, probably the wildest place I have ever been to in my life. Would I go there again? No. Would I think about scuba diving? Probably not. Um, it, there's better places around than that. So I spent two days there and that is really enough for me and I have memories from the place I took a few photographs but even today I know people that 
go there, they stay there, and there's blogs on YouTube and on the internet, and there's these gentlemen, expats, who explain what they did for the day. Not for me, I'm afraid, but I enjoyed the experience. So, that's the end of this episode. Uh, Patea, oh, this story is in a book, by the way, that I wrote. The book is called The Midlife Crisis Continues, and the chapter is called Patea, Not One of God's Creations. All right, think about that. Obviously, it's not. <laughs> a bit more detail in there for you to read about, if you wish. The Midlife Crisis Continues is a book that was released a few years ago. It's a lot of fun. It's all about travel experiences to the weird and wonderful places on the planet. I got to go now. A Merry Christmas to you all. I'll see you in the new year. Well, I'll hear from you in the new year. Or well, you'll hear from me in the new year. But have a great time over the Christmas holidays. Stay safe and be well. Bye for now. <laughs>